G'day and welcome to this week's video. This week we're going to have a look at valuations of the market and look at some of the key issues that I look at on an ongoing basis to determine where the markets are at in terms of valuation. Is it overvalued or is it undervalued? So we always know that uh, there's no forever fair value, middle of the road, exactly where it should be with, uh, with, with equity markets, with the share markets. There is always a significant level of optimism where people think the returns will keep going forever and we need to get in and make sure we don't miss out. And then there's extreme levels of pessimism during a crash or a correction where people are nothing short of scared that they'll lose their, uh, their hard earned as the market goes down and how further will it go. So what I'm doing here is you know, looking at the the key things that I that I watch, um, the research that we pay for, um, things we don't pay for, to sort of ascertain where a market's at. Now, one of the things that we look at is uh, obviously following Warren Buffett. Now, that's not particularly new for any uh, uh, fund manager or anyone that's interested in investments. We all like to follow and try to emulate what Warren Buffett does. But reading through his report, which I do each year, uh, and I've got a couple of paragraphs for us to consider here. And the, the first paragraph essentially says, in the years ahead, we hope to move much of our excess liquidity. And what he's talking about with excess liquidity is cash. He has over $100 billion in cash ready for purchases. So he wants to shift that excess liquidity, the cash into businesses that Berkshire Hathaway, that's the business they run, will own permanently. So he's not talking about trading, he's talking about buying very high quality businesses and holding it for the rest of days. Now he's saying that the immediate prospects for that, however, are not good. Prices are sky high for businesses uh, possessing decent long-term prospects. So he's saying here that obviously this is a big disappointment to him. He's hoping to see more crashes, which will mean the market is on sale and he will have the opportunity to go and, uh, and buy as uh, good quality businesses at cheaper prices. So he's saying in the second paragraph that this disappointing reality means in 2019 they'll be expanding their holdings in marketable equity. So he's essentially talking um, about um, you know expanding on Apple, American Express or Coca-Cola. And he goes, we continue nevertheless to hope for an el elephant sized acquisition, um, which obviously gets them very excited. The other thing that we look at, and this is one of the key components, is the research we get from Tim Farrelly. He provides um, evaluations over a, uh, a long period of time. He, his valuations are based on 10-year forecasts. Um, and I need to make comment that all the work we do you know, in the short term, we have absolutely no idea what will happen uh, in the short term. I'm talking, say, up to two years. Um, and that's why what the work that Tim does here is over a 10 year time frame. So he takes into account the dividends, the uh, earnings and profit growth, and talk, talks about um, the dividend yields and the P ratios. So he takes into account those fundamentals to provide a calculation to give us an estimate over a 10 year time frame. Um, and that time frame sort of smooths out the big volatility ebbs and flows of uh, you know, movements of the market and changes in the business cycle. So you can see here, this is the Aussie equities on the left, that the Aussie market is now around six and a half. It's gone up from where it was at the release date at the end of March. And you can see as the market's gone up, our future expected return over the, for the next 10 years goes down. So at 6,500 on the All Lords, uh, we could expect for the next 10 years, um, 7.2%, which Tim sees as fair value. Um, this is obviously developed markets, A REITs and so on. And what he does here with the developed markets, he splits out the US uh, equity market, and that's looking at the S&P 500. And as you can see here at 2,800, Tim has that market as in the red zone and overpriced. So. The estimate is that that will return for the next 10 years only 2.9%. So that is half a percent above, 0.4% above a term deposit. That is not enough return um, above the guaranteed safety rate of a term deposit you know, to get us excited about um, you know, investing into the US market as a whole. But like Buffett's doing, there are segments of, of that market um, that is not overvalued, where these are extremely high quality businesses 
uh, with monopolistic uh, services and products um, where there's still opportunities. But overall, uh, Netflix, tes uh, Tesla, uh, businesses that are not making profit yet have extreme valuations are ones we're very careful of. So that's Tim's work and that's extremely valuable to us and obviously these charts have been fantastic during the GFC to help people understand that hey, things are cheap, the market has come down and when everything was in the green zone, um, that helped us you know, convey the message that this market back in you know, 2009, 8, 9, 10, the market is on sale, time to buy. So if we go and have a look at a you know, third component of what we look for, um, and that is uh, Professor Robert Schiller's uh, CAPE ratio. So again, like Tim's work, he's looking at um, you know, an adjusted um, you know, returns over a 10 year time frame. So it takes out the big ebbs and flows of mo movements in the economies and, and businesses. So he provides a this CAPE ratio and it's essentially a ratio that uh, gives us an estimate on whether the market is overvalued or undervalued. So you can see this is done by Barclays. It's an ex yeah, extremely good. We've got the US market tick there, but we can overlay any other country that's in the list here. Um, now, you will note that of the extreme uh, levels here, this is during the the, uh, the the tech boom into 2000 and obviously the subsequent tech wreck. And here's the uh, uh, GFC 08 and 09. Um, going down to 12.4 uh, times multiple. So that obviously is clearly the bottom of the, uh, the GFC um, and that obviously represents significant value. But what's happened since, you know, the last 10 years, the market has gone up and it's currently sitting on a 30 times multiple. And you need to understand that over the longer term, the CAPE ratio that Professor Robert Schiller from Yale University, um, it averages around 16 times. So we're nearly double what it should be on average. So, you know, it's really only been above these levels once before and that was during the tech wreck. So for us, this means, yeah, we need to be relatively cautious and uh, we are buying, um, you know, assets, particularly in the US that are, you know, I suppose consumer staples, you know, McDonald's might fall into that. Um, coffee sellers like Starbucks would fall into that. Um, so, and that let, let's have a look how that compares to, um, you know, Australia. You can see Australia's ticked up recently, but it's at 21 times. There's a vast difference. Um, so, moving to Germany, you can see most other most other countries are pretty similar in terms of you know, where Australia at and the US is a bit of an outlier in terms of the valuation. So a bit of a longer video, but that's really just looking at the uh, what we think of, what we look for, uh, what we're mindful of when it comes to valuation of markets, um, you know, you know, just sitting through all markets uh, when they become overvalued, um, you know, can be dangerous. We want to be a little bit more active. We don't make wholesale changes uh, to our client portfolios, uh, you know, 100% equities, uh, businesses, share market to cash. Um, we do things progressively over time to limit the risk. So we're more active in our asset allocation to make sure that we avoid overvalued asset classes. Thank you for listening. Sorry about the uh, the long video, but I hope it was of value. Uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you don't mind, that'd be awesome. And give us a thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening.